So you have just bought a house. Congratulations. That takes a lot of work these days. So I'm proud of you. Fantastic. So excited for you. And you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, I have a few tips for you. I have some don'ts. I don't want you to do some things because when you buy a new house, although you're exhausted because it can be exhausting, you are done, but you're not quite finished. There's a few more things that you want to make sure that you take care of and that you do not forget when you move in. And in this video, we are going to go over eight different things I don't want you to forget. Plus, I have a bonus at the end, so you don't want to miss that. My name is Julie Spaulding. I sell real estate here in the Kansas City market, and I do these videos to help you if you're moving to Kansas City and you're wondering where to live. Let's jump into this here. So what are some things that you don't wanna forget or don't wanna do if you've just closed on your house? Here in Kansas City, generally buyers move into their home the same day or within a couple days of closing on their home. So the first thing, and this may be a little momish of me, but you've worked hard, you've made sure that your credit is good, you've got the best rate possible. I want you to continue to do that. Don't get lazy about your credit score. And I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of people go out and they go buy a bunch of furniture or they go buy new cars. And I wanna encourage you to keep up that good credit score because we are in a time where the interest rates are a little bit higher than they were. And there's a possibility that they could come back down in a couple years. And so you wanna make sure that you are in a good position to refinance if that fits into what you wanna do. And a good way to get that good rate is to have a better credit score. So don't get lazy about that. And that falls into number two, don't forget to set up automatic payments for your mortgage payments every month. Now, probably most of you are already doing that, but I just wanna encourage you to make sure that you get that set up right away with the lender. And then also to be aware that sometimes lenders will sell your loan to another company. It's nothing bad, it happens all the time, but you wanna make sure that you get that change and make sure that you know that, that you're getting it to the right person. So go ahead and set up that online account. I think you'll be happy that you did. I know not a lot of people write checks, maybe just my mom, sorry mom, but go ahead and get that set up. Number three is don't forget to take some pictures. This is what I wish I would have done when I first moved to my house. It's great to take pictures actually when it's empty because you can really see a lot of different things. A couple different reasons, and, and right now actually video would be great too, right? Just create a little icon on your phone and store all the pictures of your house and all the videos of your house in that little folder. But what's nice is for two reasons. One, if you ever update anything, it's really fun to go back and look at that before and after. And who doesn't like a good before and after little shot on Facebook, right? Or on Instagram, I love those. Another thing is, is sometimes people have needed it, hopefully you don't, for insurance purposes. So it's just nice to have that kind of documentation of what your house looks like when it's, empty or before a project or before an insurance claim. So go ahead and do that. That's number three. Don't forget to kind of do some documentation. Do it on the outside too. It's great because a lot of people change up the landscaping. So it's good to have that documentation. Number four, and this probably goes without saying, but make sure that you change your locks. Now it doesn't have to be changing them. You can actually have them rekeyed. I work a lot with Old Republic Home Warranty and that's one of the things that they offer. So you can actually have them rekeyed. You don't have to go out and buy all new locks. But sometimes the sellers have given keys to their neighbors or they've given keys to their friends or their family members who are coming over to take care of the dogs or stuff like that. Generally nothing's gonna happen, but it's just a good idea. You feel maybe just a little bit safer knowing that you've rekeyed everything. You guys are the only ones or people that you know are the only ones that have a key to your house. Plus, then a lot of times you can get them all the same, right? Because sometimes the front door is different than the back door, that's different than the garage door or in my house, I don't know where my garage door key is. So it'd be probably nice to have one of those two. So don't forget to do that. That's number four. Number five is keep all of your paperwork in a safe area. Now, that could be a safe area in your home. It could also be a safe area on your computer, right? A lot of that stuff is computerized, but 
like the documentation of your pictures is just find a folder, make a home folder, something that you know where it is on your computer or in the cloud or on the drive, something that if your computer pow, goes away, it's not on your desktop. I think it's also a good idea, I could be old fashioned, but I think it's also a good idea if you have the actual paperwork to keep that in a safe place. Many times people will close and then they're going back to their old apartment or their old house and then it gets all, who knows where some of that's at, right? But it's just a good idea to have one place for all those important documents. So that's my number five thing. Don't forget about the paperwork. You just never know when you may need it. Number six is don't forget to change utilities, which most of you have done, but I'm clumping in utilities with also your address. You would not believe how many times I am running packages from Amazon or Kohl's or Costco or whatever, back and forth between buyer and seller because somebody has forgotten to change their address on Amazon and they just order something and it goes to the old address. You also wanna think about your driver's license, you wanna change your auto insurance. That's one that people forget. A lot of times your home insurance is the same as your auto insurance, but not necessarily. So you wanna make sure that that is changed as well. Make sure you get all of that changed as soon as possible and update those little mailing lists that you're on. So that's number six. Number seven is to don't forget about that inspection report. You move in and you're just so happy to be in the house and you don't want to think about it anymore. But I would encourage you to get out the inspection report that you probably had on the house, hopefully you did an inspection, and start looking at some of those ticky tacky things that they do that you know, you're not gonna ask the seller to fix, but maybe need to be done. One of those I would encourage you to do right away is to change the filter on the furnace. And I would just kind of set that up to do it on a monthly basis if you're using those smaller ones, or maybe you get one that's a little bit bigger and it doesn't have to be done, you know, maybe every quarter or three months, something like that. Also, little things like extending the drain spouts, right? You probably didn't ask the seller to do that, but it's very important to do that. So just kind of start marking off. You don't have to do them all in the first weekend, but I would start doing some of those because trust me, you will save money if you do these small things ahead of time before waiting until things get way worse. Water is your biggest enemy with, with houses. Make sure your water is away from the house. Make sure your gutters are cleaned out. That is super important. You will save so much money if you make sure water is not coming towards your house, but going away from your house. Another thing that's kind of nice is to change those little sensors on the garage doors, especially if kids or pets, if they're not set up quite right, they're not gonna stop. So we don't want any little hands or feet squished under the door. So make sure those are set up correctly. All right, that was number seven. Number eight is meet your neighbors. I know it's not always the most fun thing to do and it's all sometimes uncomfortable, but they're your neighbors. So go meet them. It's very nice to introduce yourselves. Maybe they'll come see you, say hi, answer the door. You could join up for a little Facebook group or something about the neighbor. Just trust me in the long run, it's nicer to have a good relationship with your neighbors than a bad one. Just go introduce yourself. So, I just wanted to introduce myself. Just a little tip. Okay, here's my bonus. And I know this is gonna sound like a weird one, but do not forget about the water shutoff valve, the main one, not the little ones under the sinks or under the toilet, but the main water shutoff valve. Everybody in the house, I'm talking about everybody, even the kids need to know about where the main water shutoff valve is. Because like I said, on the outside, water is your biggest enemy. On the inside, it's kind of like that too. So put a sign on it, make sure everybody knows how to shut it off. You will never hurt anything by shutting off the water. And trust me, there's gonna be a time maybe where the toilet overflows or the sink burst or something happens and you need to know where that's at. You could always go up and shut it off underneath the sink, but I would go for the big main water one first. So those are my tips. I know there's a lot to think about when you move into a new home, but I would definitely take these eight things, nine actually with the bonus under consideration. Make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel because I will come back to you with several other good tips and I can help those of you who are wanting to buy or to sell here in the Kansas City market. And remember, you deserve to love where you live.